as normal, I get criticized by both sides, both the left and the right. It's to be expected when I don't cling to either side. Some people complain that I'm framing things from a conservative point of view, and there are other people who complain that I frame things from a leftist point of view. And that's fine. Some of the complaints recently have been that I'm misrepresenting people on the left. One person was complaining that I associate Martin Luther King with the notion that we should look at people for the content of their character, not the color of their skin. Saying that MLK's I Have a Dream speech does not in any way represent his actual views. They were citing a letter that MLK wrote from a Birmingham jail in 1963. Yeah, that letter didn't disprove anything that I said about MLK in my video. Yeah, most white moderates in 1963 were uncomfortable with the idea of integration. That's where this country was in 1963. Integration is what was being fought for back then. Acceptance is what was being fought for back then. Things have very much improved since then. We have integration today. Is it perfect? No. But it's a night and day difference between 1963 and today. Most of the attitudes that we have today are quite different than in 1963. We've come a long way. Is it perfect? No. Do we have a long way to go? Yes. And yes, Martin Luther King talked about, back then, things that we would call structural racism today. Police brutality, job discrimination, and a number of other issues. I clearly and redundantly said in my last video that we need to stop police brutality as much as possible. Some people were really pissy at me towards that. They're saying, oh, police brutality isn't a problem. Oh, whatever, man. You want to stick your head in the sand? I mean, people who say that, it's, it's like, you must obey. Live your life this particular way and obey. Most of those people are are religious. They're all right with feeling like they have to obey a god, so having to obey authority figures isn't much different to them, right? It's pathetic as far as I'm concerned. We shouldn't be living our lives in fear. We should be, as, as long as we're not actually hurting anyone else, that's really what should matter. But nope, 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 we should be afraid. Afraid we might break a law. An unreasonable law. We have way too many laws. Stupid laws. Things that are left over from past eras. Stuff that needs to be taken off the books. So yes, I'm against police brutality. I've talked about it many times. And I went into detail of how we could achieve this. Not an incredible amount of detail, but some detail. You know, it's, it's not a subject that I professionally study or anything. They're just my observations. They're just things that I think could help. Is it perfect? No. And I'm not going to claim to know all the answers. I've also talked about how we need to stop looking at black people as if they're criminals just for being black. I mean, there wouldn't be all these incidents of people calling the police on black people for stupid shit, for stupid reasons, if there wasn't this kind of attitude. Oh, well, a black person was in the wrong place at the wrong time, time to have the police called on them. Time to have their life threatened, because once the police get there, you know, they have to act a very particular way. They have to, uh, you know, do all the right things. Now, do police treat white people badly too? Yeah, there's a number of bad cops out there. That's why I say just in general, we need to cut back on police brutality. If we can cut back on police brutality, it'll help everyone, including those in the black community. You know, I've talked about how we shouldn't profile black people. Police shouldn't profile black people if, if they're not even looking for a specific crime. You know, someone who's committed a specific crime. I've already made that clear. You know, that's part of the, the, the way that police are right now. It's part of, and the way they've been for a long time, it's never really gotten that much better. You know, the way that police are about that is part of systemic racism in this country. 
You know, we need to stop looking at black people as if they're criminals. Now, the types of things that Robin D'Angelo preaches about in her seminars and in her book aren't going to help this. As I've said already, her type of methodology that's common in these types of seminars causes more harm than good. And I stand by that. In fact, statistics show that the more that these companies try to cram this sort of thing down people's throats in these seminars, the less likely these companies will hire people of color and other oppressed groups. These divisive ideas that come from critical theory, critical race theory, gender theory, are divisive. They do not help the cause. Sure, they make the people saying them and make the people who go, oh, I agree fully. Yeah, it, it makes those people feel good for a period of time, but they don't actually help. Now, having said that, in my video, I didn't go very much into discrimination. Perhaps I should have. But again, I can't go into every subject in every video. So yeah, I didn't go into how much discrimination still exists in this country. And it definitely still exists. It's pretty nasty in some places. I mean, as I said, when I lived in Shamokin, Pennsylvania, the just blatant overt racism was everywhere. Everywhere. And I don't know what to say about those places. I'm glad I don't live there anymore. So, you know, all across the U.S., black people get discriminated against, women get discriminated against, gay people get discriminated against, trans people definitely get discriminated against. I think we seriously need to increase the penalties for this type of discrimination. I think we need to educate people more on the fact that, hey, we're all just people. We're all humans. We're all deserving of the same rights and opportunities as everyone else. Even if you don't like some of the attitudes that come from some demographics, you need to treat them the same as everyone else, at least in a professional setting. Now, I mean, if you can see that someone is having a problem, yet try to help their problem. I mean, it's not like you, it's not like you suddenly become unempathetic towards people. Uh, I mean, Everyone has their own individual scenarios. So I'm not saying, you know, treat everyone as if they're all going through the same exact things. I'm not saying that. But if you're in a professional setting, you don't treat someone as if they're less worthy of being considered a human than someone else. We're all humans. Now, I say in a professional setting, right? You know, yeah, we... we I mean, we essentially should be required to treat people decently in a professional setting, right? Now, if you're, if you're on your own, you're not representing your company, you know, if you want to be a jackass to people, I mean, go ahead, but you look like a jackass. I mean, that's on you. I'm not going to tell you how you have to act when you're out on your own. If you want to be an asshole, be an asshole, and everyone will look at you as an asshole, and rightly so. Now, if the head honchos of a company are scared that hiring someone of a particular demographic might cause tensions in the workplace, I don't know, they, they need to just abandon those fears. Uh, to me, they should be more scared of what would happen to them if they don't hire them than if they do. But, you know, those types of fears, I think, are the primary reason why companies discriminate. Even if they think it might be bad for that potential employee, and they think that that employee would be treated badly in the workplace, they still need to hire them if they meet the qualifications. Now, I don't know exactly how this sort of thing can be regulated. I don't know how companies could be made scared of not hiring people who are qualified for the job, but, you know, they're scared that... Uh, that there might be some sort of tension in the workplace if they hire them. Yeah, I, I don't know what could put that kind of fear into companies. I don't know the answer to that. I do know that demographical quotas are a bad idea. Using the progressive stack as a template for hiring people, yeah, that's a bad idea. I believe strongly in trying to make the meritocracy work. Now, right now, the meritocracy is kind of broken. There's a lot of favoritism going on. You know, oh, this person knows this person knows this person, so they get hired because they know the right people. 
There's a lot of problems with the meritocracy right now. We need to figure out a way to get the meritocracy to work for everyone. Again, I don't have any sort of specific plan on how to do that and how to achieve that. I just know that there are a lot of people out there who say, well, the meritocracy isn't working, so let's do something completely different. Let's throw out the baby with the bathwater. And I'm like, just no, no, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. No, let's work at fixing what we have. Another complaint is that I've been saying that the left seems more unhinged than the right. But I still stand by that. The right isn't trying to destroy people's lives for stating a view they don't like. They're not trying to get people fired for stating views they don't like. They're not trying to take away someone's ability to process credit because they said something that they don't like. They're not blocking people for simply supporting Democrats or supporting Biden. They're certainly not disowning their family members because, oh, you're a Democrat. I can't associate with you. Yeah, you, you don't see that happening. I mean, I'm not going to say it never happens, but it's certainly not happening on the level that we see going on with the left. People on the right call people names. They try to say that anyone to the left of Biden is a communist. Some of them even try to say that Biden is a communist. You know, they sometimes throw a fit over trivial things like being told they need to wear a mask. Yeah, there's those things. So there's some element of them being unhinged. You know, that's true. And many people on the right are complaining quite a bit that they're being censored on big tech platforms. And sure, they're not losing their First Amendment rights. They're not really losing their freedom of speech. The government isn't censoring them. They can go to other platforms, some echo chamber platforms, this is all about companies enforcing their terms of service on their platforms. But right-wingers are still being censored, and they're showing concern about it. During times like these, when we can't have social gatherings anymore, we can't have any sort of town halls, just about everything is virtual, people are spending their lives on these things. So, right now, people losing their ability to state their views, if their views are right-wing in nature, is kind of a big deal. I empathize with those people complaining about it. I don't really consider it to be unhinged for people to complain about it. Except for the people saying, my First Amendment rights are being violated. No, no, they're not being violated. No. You're not losing your First Amendment rights. You're not really losing your freedom of speech. Again, this isn't the government stopping you from saying these things. You're not being fined. You're not seeing jail time. You know, you have freedom of speech. It's not like what it is in like the UK where you can see some, some serious penalties for saying bad things online, right? Bad things. You know, the United States has freedom of speech. So the people saying that being censored on big tech platforms is then losing their First Amendment rights, yeah, those people are unhinged. Absolutely. They look ridiculous. But when it comes to being unhinged, are these things I just talked about with the right the equivalent of how the left seems to be unhinged? Declaring that Trump is essentially Hitler? That Trump wants to round up minorities? Or that he will if he's elected for a second term? Up, oh, he's going to round up all the minorities. We're going to have a repeat of, of, uh, of Hitler's regime. Look out, we're living in a fascist dictatorship. And then anyone who even slightly disagrees with any of these things gets blocked, including family members, disassociating completely from their families because, oh, a family member uh, uh, supports Trump. Trying to ruin the lives of people who disagree. Someone fired because they're a Trump supporter. Trying to ruin someone's life because, you know, they disagree with what you say about the right. Can you really say that the right wing is just as unhinged as that at this time? I obviously don't like the right wing. I can't stand almost anything that the right stands for at this time. At least in this country. Maybe I'd feel differently about some other countries, because their right-left paradigm is quite different than here. I don't like how the right wing has been making fun of people 
from the beginning who have been hurt by Trump becoming president and Trump saying some of the things that he does in his punching down elements. You know, people on the left who have been hurt by what they're seeing happen to the country, people losing their ability to be nice to each other, everyone removing their filters. Yeah, the, the right wing has been just, just relentlessly making fun of people on the left for being hurt. Like I've said before, it's, it's like cruelty is the point. Ha ha, you're hurt. Ha ha, you're pathetic. That's the attitude. I mean, that kind of attitude has made this kind of situation far, far worse. Would they be slightly unhinged? Sure. Sure. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, none of this stuff would exist at all. But it wouldn't exist on the level that it is now if it wouldn't have been for the way the right has been acting. And much of this attitude from the right can be easily traced to Trump and how Trump treats those who don't like him or who just simply disagree with him or in some cases just simply don't practically worship him or praise him. Oh, they're not praising me. Time to make fun of them. And now people on the right don't like the monster they've helped create. And to those of you who are on the right that are watching this, yeah, you, you can't claim that the right wing doesn't have their hand in this. You can't just blame this on the left. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. You know this. But this doesn't mean that the right is unhinged. You know, that means that the right has been acting like bullies. And now they don't like how the people they've been picking on have been fighting back. I don't like it either. I don't think anyone likes it, not even Mikey. But I don't see this coming to an end anytime soon, especially not if Trump gets elected for a second term, which is unfortunately pretty likely. People are saying, oh, but, but look at the polls. It's like the polls have to do with what might be the popular vote. Hillary won the popular vote. The polls said she'd win the popular vote, but she lost the electoral vote. And I have a strong feeling that's going to happen again at this election. So anyway, on a different side of things, there was one guy who left a comment saying, my intuition is telling me that this guy is toxic as fuck. You know, referring to me and my video and claiming that I'm toxic. And then he somehow expected me to take that as some sort of valid criticism. Later saying, I just hate being attacked by a dogmatic mob that treats me as if I murder their sacred cow when I say something that disagrees with their beliefs. And I'm like, dude, telling someone that they're toxic as fuck without any other criticism is not disagreeing with their beliefs. It's not even a position. An insult is not a position. An insult isn't criticism. It's purely designed to make the person you're saying it to feel bad. It lines up with a lot of Trumpists and anti-SJWs on this platform over the years. Whining that people jumped on your case for calling me toxic as fuck and calling them a dogmatic mob makes you look pathetic. As I've said, you know, expecting others to look at that kind of comment as simply disagreeing with beliefs is something I expect out of a Trump cultist. So when I searched around for his name, Badica da Vinci, I find him leaving comments that are as deep and interesting as Trump 2020, baby, on videos that don't even hardly have anything to do with that, right? And there was one where he was referring to Carlos Maza, who, I mean, I don't really like Carlos Maza either. He's I, he's a communist as far as I'm concerned, or I mean, the, the dictionary definition of socialist, all the way. I don't like him. But uh, Badica said of him, Gay Wonk is an evil communist psychopath. He needs to be stopped. And there were other comments on other videos such as, we should just do them a favor and bust a cap in their ass and GG. GG meaning good game, apparently, anyway. I mean, I've seen it in a number of places, but I mean, maybe there's, maybe there's another uh, definition of that for that acronym. I don't know. But yeah, uh, 
Badica da Vinci is, is quite the, the intellectual, isn't he? And I'm betting he'll consider me totally toxic for mentioning any of that in this video. And that's fine. You can call me toxic if you want. But hey, you know, I've proven many times that I change my views based on new information. If you show me that I'm wrong, I'll, I'll ad generally admit that I'm wrong. I mean, I'm not going to say every time. We all have a little bit of stubbornness in us. But in general, you know, I, I change my views when I'm given new information. Anyway. But then, of course, there are people who try to deny that there's any sort of systemic racism in this country at all. They claim that police don't profile black people. They claim that black people don't have to worry about police any more than white people do. They claim that black people don't get discriminated against for being black, no matter how much proof there is that this discrimination exists. Even with all the proof there is about people being discriminated against for just having a black-sounding name. Oh, Laquisha? Next applicant. Nope, nope, that's not racist at all, right? Give me a fucking break. I I've seen people argue for, for pages and pages as to why discriminating against someone for just the name they have isn't racist in nature. They will claim that there's nothing even wrong with discriminating against people for having a name they don't like. It's pathetic. People will give excuses for any type of racism. If it's a black person who was killed, they'll find a way to make an excuse for it, no matter what the situation is. Yeah, you know, They'll say things like, oh, he was a criminal, or, oh, this person murdered people. Even though police aren't supposed to also be the judge and executioner, they're supposed to de-escalate a situation. Police gave Dylan Roof a hamburger on the way to the police station. He murdered people. Oh, but let me guess. They were trying to get on his good side so they could get more information from him when they're interrogating him, right? Yeah, for, for mass murder? Yeah, that makes perfect sense, right? Heck, there are people who even excuse George Floyd's death, saying, oh, well, he was on drugs. Yeah, as if that changes the whole thing. Yet kneeling on someone's neck for eight minutes. Yep, that's, that's totally acceptable, right? And these are the same people who claim that there's no systemic racism, even though their arguments are the definition of racist. They just somehow don't see it. I mean, what do you tell people like this? There's really nothing you can do. So yeah, people on the extremes of both sides can't stand me. And you know what? I'm all right with that. 